Hey, it's Russ from Pro Tools Expert, and I got a hold of a copy of F Expansion's new baby, Mool. Mool is a multi-band distortion unit with filtering and lots of other stuff built in. So I'll give you a quick show and tell, and then I'll show you it in action with some stuff. How it works basically is you have either multi-band or you have serial or you have single band distortion going on. What we mean by that is single band normally is that you'd have a single band and then the distortion is applied to the whole band and in this case the midsection becomes that band. And then we can apply a distortion effect or a ring mod effect and then we can do different things to it like we can add filters to it like tone and width on a cutoff frequency, low pass, band pass and high pass. Uh, we turn the gain in and out, we can saturate it or unsaturate it. We can then use a transient shaper as well to give it more bite or more body. And uh, I'll show you these all actually in, in action in a minute. And then we can mix the two together. Then we have serial where it would go into the low, into the mids, into the highs. And basically you could just distort the hell out of it. Uh, then you have multiband where we kind of split the bands. So you've got low, mids and highs. And you can do different things to different parts of the bands. Now that's when it gets really interesting and really creative. Because then you can start to get a drum loop, for example. And I'm going to show you in a second. And modify the bass drum differently than you modify the uh, hi-hats. Than you modify this, the mid section. And with some clever uh, techniques, you can do some really cool stuff. Then you can apply to those things modulation sources. So you've got LFO1, LFO2, which are synced to the uh, tempo, which is cool. So you can have things moving in tempo with the music so you have a uh, low frequency oscillator one lfo2 you have an envelope follower which makes it react in, in, in time with the envelope that's coming in. Then you have a sample and hold as well, which works in sync. And these have a lots of detail in them as well. You've got a rate, which of course is tempo synced. As you move it, you can see there we've got one bar, two bars, and stuff like that. Then you've got the shape of the envelope. So you go square waves, triangle, sawtooth, that kind of stuff. Then you can move the phase of that as well. And then you've got the gain of it as well, so how high or how low they are as you move them. So for now, I'm going to put that back into a basic smooth sine wave. Uh, then we uh, can also assign MIDI to it as well. So we can learn MIDI commands from our controllers and we can choose one. And we can literally just say, OK, I want this drive to be assigned. So choose that one. And then if I move my MIDI controller, then it will apply it if the MIDI controller is coming in. Uh, and that's really cool as well. So let's say you've got something like a, a control surface uh, or an axiom uh, or you've got a machine or something like that and you can learn those things and then they will work with MIDI, which is really cool. So then you have lots of different ways that you can actually mash up the sound. That's the best way of putting it, I think. Uh, and what you can say is you can either have it going through so you can miss out bands. Uh, then you have the decam uh, diode and uh, transistor and tube type distortions. Then you have rectified differential and all that kind of stuff. Then you've got ring mod, which is really cool. One of my favorites, actually. Overdrives, clippers, sound shapers, and we've also got some bit reduction and uh, some sample rate reduction as well. So you've got plenty to play with there in terms of different types of distortion unit. So let me show you. So I've got a beat, a break beat here. Let me play it for you. Let me play the one. So I want to get the... Oh, that one's actually playing. That's why. Let me just kill that. So let me play you what I had originally. Pretty standard beat. And as you can see now, different things are going on. Let me show you what's going on. So let me solo the bottom end. So I've put a sine wave ring modulator on that. And as you can hear that, is a tune sound I've got all to wet. That's now resonating it with a ring modulator. And you add in the original kick drum and you get some really nice kind of low end sound. Then you change the cutoff of that. You can change the dynamics bit, put it give a lot of body, just make it very tight. Then we have uh, Filters as well, low pass, band pass, and high pass as well. And as I say, you can then assign modulation to these sources. So let's say this one here. 
wanted it to do that. Easy. We just choose a source. I'm going to choose LFO one. Click on it here. Just grab hits. If you use decam since before, it's 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 the same as ever. So just push it up then. And now that's modulating from LFO one. Change the rate of it. Change the phase of it. More for the wave, do some weird things with the wave. What we can also do as well is we can choose it to either be uh, uni or bipolar, which means that if it's bipolar, it means that then you can have it going both ways. At the moment, it's on one side of that frequency. And if we go to bipolar, then we can uh, choose that then to be uh, working on both sides. So we go here by bi bipolar bi modulation now, and as you can see, that's working both sides of the frequency point. Quite like that. Let's bypass that. There's a saturator built in as well, which can also help with the sound and give it some more crunch at the end. Then there's a high def feature. Now, one of the questions uh, that you might ask, and I asked also because I was with Angus yesterday, he's appearing on the podcast soon, is that uh, why have high definition in a distortion unit? That's all to do with the harmonics that are created higher up. And if you don't want to lose those harmonics that are created in the sample process, then if you use high definition, it's going to take up more processing power, but you'll have a much richer sound because it'll be harmonically richer because it's using high def sampling. There's the original sound. And as you can see, I've got modulators working in all sorts of places. I've got a rectifier here. And here in the middle as well. We have it fully wet. That's what I've created with it now. The nice thing is you can mix them together. Original, your new sound. So that's it on a drum part. Let's put it on a bass part. Here's a bass part without it first. And as you can see again, we're putting modulators on there. Crunching it up a bit. A triangle, asymmetric, and then at the top end, there's nothing going on there. And the whole sound would sound like this. So, as I say, it's nice you can mix them together and really get some really interesting sounds. And you can hear there with the high definition in. Transforming the sound, totally different. So you can use as little or as much as you want, but adding these modulators really can help. So I've got a 303 now. There's the original. Some more ring modulation here. Let's get that a bit more mod. Make it bipolar. Quite like that. So 
So here's the original without any distortion, without any maul on it. So, and here it is with it. I think you'll agree that it adds a real sense of interest, especially in stuff like dance music. I've also been playing with it on things like synth pads and stuff. You can add some really interesting shapes and some modulations to synths, which is really nice. So for those of you that uh, are really looking for something interesting, and I forgot to mention as well, we've, we've, got, we've got filters here that we can move around. We can see the filters moving in action when we start to move them. So you've got that nice visualization there. So as, as stuff gets moved, you can see it there and you can do some really cool stuff with the filters. And then you have a spectrum analyzer as well. Show you what's going on as well. So, and then some great presets as well. So you can explore the presets. There's loads of great presets in there. Uh, bass, channel presets, and some of them are very subtle, and some of them are just just mad. So uh, if we go to some of the drum ones very quickly, let's just uh, put this on its on its own. As you can hear, that's pretty wild. Let's try another one. Nice for lo-fi kind of drums. So, so lots and lots of great presets in there as well to play with. The great thing is you can download it as a demo and try it out, and and it will time out after 30 minutes. But uh, that's the best way for you to try this. Uh, this has been my show and tell uh, and my review of it. I think it's great. I think it's particularly good for things like dance music. So go and give it a go and give it a try and see what you think. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.